Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here, back with another video boot camp for you. This one really something for everyone, CSET, CCNA, and CCMP Bulldog alike. We're going to talk about auto negotiation for about a minute, and then we're going to see it in action. And something here that just might surprise you, because auto negotiation is one of those things that works so well when it's left alone that we really don't give it a lot of thought. And then all of a sudden we're in the exam room and they're asking us questions about it's like, oh, I don't know, I never tried that. Well, we're going we're gonna to screw around with it a little bit here on live equipment and see what happens, change some settings and that kind of thing. Uh, first off, I just want to allay any fears of my CSENT and CCNA Bulldogs out there with this multi-layer switch that you see on the board right now. You're not going to be doing multi-layer switching on your exam. You might need to know one or two basic commands. Uh, but I want you to know this beyond the exam. You would need to know this for a job interview, anything like that at all. You need to know what this symbol indicates. In this lab, the multi-layer switch is running strictly at layer 2. That's what we're dealing with here. Uh, layer 2 and layer 1, actually. Now, with both interfaces enabled for auto negotiation, one on router 3, fast ethernet 0 slash 0, the other on multi-layer switch 0 slash 7, they have a little conversation. And the conversation is via fast link pulses. And the obvious question, of course, is, well, hey, Chris, you know, fast is a relative term. Fast is compared to what? Uh, without sounding like a smart ass, although I think I will anyway, uh, they're fast as compared to normal link pulses. And you can see here in the drawings, both courtesy of Wikipedia, both in the public domain, you can see that in the same time frame of 16 milliseconds plus or minus 8 milliseconds, we're just sending out a lot more pulses with FLPs than we are with NLPs. That's really just about all you need to know about those, except what the FLP is. It's basically just a declaration of the capabilities of that sending device. And the sending device is announcing to the other end, hey, here's the highest speed that I can support. Here's the best duplex setting that I can support. And it allows both ends to make an intelligent decision as to what speed and duplex they can run that is as quick as possible and efficient as possible without overwhelming the other device on the point on the connection. Because if you've got an Ethernet connection at one end or a port that's just running Ethernet speed and you have one at fast Ethernet on the other end, there's no real reason for that port to run at fast Ethernet speed because it's going to end up overwhelming the Ethernet port. Here are the fundamental auto negotiation rules. If both, if both ports support half and full duplex, we're very thankful for this decision. Full duplex is going to be preferred. Makes our life a lot easier. Also, if both ports support different speeds, the highest common speed is then preferred. And you're thinking, Chris, okay, I got it. This is pretty easy. I don't even know why we're looking at this. Well, you, you'll catch on in a second. This is good stuff to know. And here's the setup that I had at first by default. Both ports were running what we call at auto-auto, auto speed, auto duplex. And both ports are announcing to the other, hey, my port can run at 100 meg and it can run, it can support full duplex. Well, there's no real decision to be made here because the maximum capabilities are the same on both sides. You know, huzzah, nothing to decide. Both ports are going to run at fast Ethernet speed. Both of them are going to run at full duplex. And we're not going to give it a second thought. But what happens exactly if the switch, in this case, is not running auto negotiation at all? Well, what I've already done is set that port to a speed of 10 meg and a duplex setting of full. So what exactly is that going to do to our connection? We are going to see it on the live equipment in just a moment. I quickly want to mention, we've got over 20,000 students in my CCNA video boot camp right now. We're celebrating that number. We're actually taking another dollar off uh, of the 20 that we were going to run. It's 19 bucks to get in right now. $19. 30 hours of video, all fully downloadable. 30-day money-back guarantee, and your access is for life. It is not time-limited. We don't bill you by the month here. Uh, please check that out. Uh, I will put the link to get the $19 price in the YouTube description, or you could just use the coupon code 19TWITTER. For you CCNP Bulldogs, the 2015 Video Boot Camp, Switch has been totally refreshed, route and t-shoot right behind it, and you can get in for $29 right now. When I'm done refreshing that, it's going to be, again, almost 50 hours of video. The previous route and t-shoot videos are still there for you to watch as well. So this is a fantastic offer because usually when I coupon it, it's still 99 bucks. So you definitely want to jump in there now before that price goes back up. 
Now let's go ahead and bring the live equipment up, keeping in mind that I have already changed the speed and duplex setting. And holy crap, look at this. We have a mess of mismatch messages. And the reason I did this, you know, sometimes in our job, we get called in after the problem has already occurred. You know, or somebody was, and this happens, somebody was practicing a little lab command or two on the production network equipment. Uh, I know that no one listening to this has ever done that, and you shouldn't, but it does happen. So you walk in and you got a screen full of this, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what in the world is going on here? Well, obviously we're being screamed at by Cisco Discovery Protocol, CDP, and it's a duplex mismatch. I mean, this is as obvious as a console message gets. And it's telling us that one port is not half duplex and the other is half duplex. But which is which, you might ask? Well, I'm gonna leave this running. It's gonna come up every minute or so. But what I really wanna point out to you is this. Note that on fast ethernet zero slash seven on our multi-layer switch, we're up and up. And we're really not used to seeing that when there's some kind of communications issue, right? Because especially uh, you've worked with frame relay, you've worked with PPP, you've worked with a connection that has to give the clock rate to the other end. What we're used to seeing when there's some kind of mismatch, as soon as you hear the word mismatch, you think, oh, the line protocol is going to be down. Because physically, the port is fine. That's what fast Ethernet 07 is up means. And then line protocol, that's talking about the logical state of the route, of the interface. So it's up and up on this side. So what's going on on router 3? Well, it's up and up on this side, too. Hmm. So this is kind of a different mismatch. And we need to determine exactly what's going on or where the problem is. Now, we're going to get a console message here in a minute. It's going to kind of let us know that. But let's go back to the board here because I want to share this with you. Um, what we have here is called parallel detection. When one endpoint is running on a negotiation and the other end is not, that's what we have. It's called PD, parallel detection. Now, parallel detection brings us some good news. The device running on a negotiation can detect the speed of the remote device and adjust its speed accordingly. And that's what happened here because router three detected the 10 meg speed on the switch and set its own speed accordingly. And if we go back up here to router three, you can see right here, there's the speed. So that matches the switch. Now, the bad news with parallel detection is that you can't detect the remote endpoints duplex setting. That's the bad news. The router is not going to assume full duplex because that could be a foolish assumption. So what it's going to do is set its own port to the dreaded half duplex. And if we go back to the live equipment again, you can see that is exactly what happened. Let me space back up there. Again, we're on the router. And the router port, the one that's set for auto negotiation, that's the one that actually went back to half duplex. Isn't that something? You would suspect the issue would be on the switch because that's where auto negotiation isn't running. But auto negotiation is, uh, is fine as far as the speed goes. Uh, but when one partner's running it and the other one isn't, the duplex setting is what gets mixed, messed up. So the problem here, and the reason I I'm, I'm really want to point this out to you, the issue there is that your communications are still going to exist, but they're really going to be screwed up. Because you got one endpoint that's running at half duplex, it's only going to send or receive. You know, it can't can't do both at the same time. It's going to detect collisions where there really aren't any collisions. It's a real mess. Now, luckily for us, we're going to get this little duplex mismatch setting uh, message every minute until we actually fix it, which is what we're going to do right now. But you can see it's a little harder to spot if you're not getting these CDP messages because the line protocol is still up. Everything looks fine but it's not. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's go ahead. Let's stick around for a few minutes here. And I'm going to set the speed back to auto and the duplex back to auto. And what you will see then is the line protocol go down and now the physical interface went down and then five seconds later they both come back up. And you can see here what I'm talking about. Here's our line protocol 
on fast ethernet 0 slash 7, change state to down. Physical interface 07, change state to down. I know that's a little off the screen there, but there you go. And a few seconds later, they come back up. You should expect that. When you change speed and duplex settings in any form, you're going to see the line protocol bounce. But now, let's check out those speeds. And you can see here, we're running at full 100 on the switch. And hopefully, we are also running at full and 100 meg on the router. So there you go. That's just how it works. And again, auto configuration, a great thing to leave alone for production networks, for your lab work. You need to dig a little bit deeper, just like we did here today. Thanks for watching today's video boot camp. A little longer than usual, but nothing wrong with that. Plenty of great information here for your exams. And I'll have new videos here regularly for you once again on YouTube starting here in April 2015. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on YouTube and Udemy.